it's just the way it's layers. <sighs> yeah, it's just the way it is, baby. Hey, we're live on the air. Oh, hey. Hey, hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to The Secret Show. It's episode number 220 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Wait, I have to switch my camera over like this? We should remind people why it's actually called The Secret Show. That's a very good idea. And I'm going to also let everyone know what the topics are for today's show. But let's talk about that. Some people say Secret Show. It's not secret. It's on YouTube. Yeah. It's because <laughs> well, before yeah. it was YouTube, it was just our little secret. It was literally we would talk for hours and hours and hours and hours on on Skype not even this platform on Skype, just talking about flat earth all yeah. the time. And then we realized after probably ugh, the first 500 hours, all that wasted material. Yeah, I know. It's like, <laughs> you know what? We're not seeing anything that, that could upset anybody. I think all of this is actually something we could put on, put on air. It's like, right. So why don't we just change it to where we don't talk about it every night and we talk about it here. Right. And what we would talk about were the latest videos, what's going on in flat earth and et cetera, et cetera. The same thing we talk about on the secret show. Yeah. The secret show is very lighthearted. Um, it's meant to be that way. It's not yeah. a serious show. I know flat earth is a serious topic. There's other programs on my show that direct themselves towards seriousness about people discovering um, this, this big awakening and how it's affected their lives. In fact, tomorrow, which will be April 5th, 2018, my guest will be CC. And if you don't know him, um, I've shared one of his videos on my Facebook and on my Twitter today, and you will get to know him. He's a great guy. He lives uh, on the East Coast, and he might be in our live chat today. And that'll be 6 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. A flat earther who's been around and is often found on uh, your show, uh, Strange World, Mark, calling in. But not everybody knows him, and not that everybody will ever know him after just being on my show. But a few more people will get to know him. And right. um, it's always good to have other people viewing what you put out there because he does put out some very thought provoking material about the nature of the world that we live in or the world that we thought we lived in. But now, no, we don't. And it's yeah. good to collect photographic records of these people. <laughs> exactly. And a DNA test. So I did send him that little uh, plastic tube to spit in and he will be <laughs> mailing it back to me, probably arrive here at my desk by showtime tomorrow so I can have him cloned <laughs> like yes. everyone else. I was about to say, you're not going to send it directly to the Mormons because that's who runs that test. Yeah, that's, that's so uh, what is it? Something, something in me, one, two, three, me. Is it ancestry.com? Oh, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a version now, I did, um, I know the name is not one, two, three, me, but everyone knows what I'm talking about. You can order this DNA test to find out your, uh, your genetic background. I bought the thing. I had it in my house and I returned it on Amazon. Because I didn't it started creeping me out. Like, what are they going to do with this material? Um, this sounds very, um, you know, Brave New World, uh, 1984. I don't want to, any part of it. So I returned it. And it was quite expensive. Hmm. Well, there so. you go. I was thinking of making a, uh, a combination app for my phone, which was going to be a combination bed and breakfast, <laughs> uh, personal driver, and dating service. I was going to call it Air Uber Grinder. I like the idea, but you think, it needs you think some work. The name is taken. <laughs> I don't know. No, I think I think it's still available and probably always will be. <laughs> right. I don't see any problem with using it. I can't imagine any lawsuits that would happen. After no, that. not at all. Anyway, this is the Secret Show. Welcome to everyone in the live chat. Please give it a thumbs up and share the video on your social media. And if you're watching this not during the live program, uh, it's Wednesday, most every Wednesday, unless I don't know something crazy happens uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern when we do this show. It's right. the softer side of flat earth. That's why I'm wearing a very soft velvet shirt. Um, <laughs> we discuss the latest happenings, as we were saying, about flat earth and meetups and new videos and mainstream news. A lot of weird things have happened since last week's secret show. In fact, we did the show and then all hell broke loose. Uh, there was the release of the Convex Earth documentary. We're going to talk about that and the revelation right. that Bilu, the alien who spoke <laughs> shrouded by greenery, inspired the documentary maker, Orander Fernandez de Oliveira, a.k.a. UFO, his name actually spells out UFO, who's the leader of the Convex Earth Research Group. Uh, that came out. I mean, everyone was interested in the Convex Earth documentary. Some of them, some, some of the people thought it was definitely a bad thing, and other people thought, well, maybe we could work with them. And then after the Beluthi came out, a lot of people 
stepped away. Anyway, we're going to talk about the alleged YouTube Southern California shooter. What's going on with that? And how NOAA is preventing SpaceX from using their cameras in space in the future. Now, we all know they're not using any cameras in space at all, but that's the mainstream story. We're going to touch on a new supersonic jet from your friends. I'm saying that, Mark, because you love planes, from Lockheed Martin. What oh, are they yeah. going to use it for? Plus, some good news here in all of this, uh, mixed in with Uber, Grinder, uh, Airbnb. Air, and Air, Air Uber, Grinder. <laughs> Come on. It's going to catch on. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it will. Um, I'll be a skeleton <laughs> sitting in front of my computer by the time that happens. Anyway, plus, we're going to talk about the good news that 60% of young adults are into the flat earth. No, 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 the other way. The other way. 60%, mm. only 60% believe in the globe. Oh, okay. Only 60%. I mean, we can't, we can't take it. No, if we had 60%, we wouldn't be talking on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, We'd yeah. be. Excuse me. Um, indeed. Anyway, let the show begin. Let's talk about that first, actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's something that you have shared, you have mentioned and discussed on your strange world show, which is every Tuesday on TFR. Right. So we weren't the ones to come up with this. And, and I, I love the reason why I love this story more than most is we had nothing to do with it. It's one of the first times that a story broke where we had literally no part in anything. The data and collection, who was involved. You mean we as in the flat earth community? Yes. Yes. We as in the, the flat earth army. Not just you and I behind the Hail Hydra. Anyway. <laughs> So manipulating there, everything. There was a survey that was done by you guys can click on this if you want. I'll, I'll give you the links real quick. You, the the original one was done by yougov.com and they like doing surveys. And they initially their initial stories was most flat earthers consider themselves very religious and then the the smaller title underneath it was just 66% of millennials firmly believe that the earth is round which is interesting. However, that story then got picked up by IFL Science, which then was parroted by Forbes magazine and a couple others. In fact, there's already been one that now the science people are starting to fight against each other to where there's already a scientific group that's saying, no, 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 no. This group's, the, the data is wrong. It's misleading. And, the, and it's like, okay, you guys can hash it out because because we didn't do it. But let me read the article real quick. Yes. It's not very long. Uh, so you guys can go to iflscience.com and it's called just 66% of young adults in America accept that earth is round according to a new survey. We've always heard that part. According to a survey. Survey says. Exactly. <laughs> Four out of three people don't understand fractions, you know. So we're going to go. You got that, right? You got that? So because if you didn't, I'd be worried. It goes some little something like this. The flat earth movement clearly isn't going away anytime soon, although we'd argue that it's not going to suddenly become a mainstream belief. It is concerning how disgusted it is and admittedly the coverage of it from the scientifically whimsical to the ridiculous probably isn't helping by giving such beliefs a platform. Still, it's a phenomenon worth looking into and a YouGov survey has done just that. The results are unsettling. And hopefully the work of a certain demographic not taking the questions particularly seriously, you know, so they're already backpedaling saying, well, the kids probably they're not serious about this. They can't believe that they're answering this way. Surveying 8,215 U.S. adults weighed to be representative of the entire U.S. population. It suggests that just 84 percent have always believed the world is round. And that's all age groups among 18 to 24 year olds. However, this percentage falls to 66 percent, though it continually rises through various age groups to reach a peak at 94 percent at 55 and older, which means even in our worst day, we're scoring 6 percent uh, on, you know, even the hardcore cases. Right. The thought that just two thirds of young adults in America accept that the planet is an oblate spheroid, interesting that they would actually use the Neil deGrasse Tyson reference, is deeply concerning. But wait, there's more. 5% of the U.S. adults have always thought the world was round, but have become more skeptical as of late. <laughs> mm, wonder why. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Not. This number rises to 9% among 18 to 24 year olds. In contrast, 2% of all those surveyed have always believed the world is flat, which rises to four among 18 to 24 year olds, so on and so on. Um, I don't want to throw out too many stats, so otherwise people are going to glaze over. Generally speaking, the older someone in the US 
is, the less likely they are to have any flat earth beliefs. Not surprising because they would be tied to the, the Apollo program. In this sense, then the trend is the opposite for the acceptance of the theory of evolution in a most basic form with older people less likely to accept that life has evolved over time. Uh, let's see here. And then they go over like, you know, various incomes and demographics. What's interesting, though, and I'll, I'll end it with this. And you guys can look up the stats yourself. I'm a, I'm it, a big it's actually uh, linked in the description box of this video, this whole article, the IFL science article. For, okay. And what did you just do to your hair? Looks really great, whatever you just did. I just put it in the thing that to tie it back because it was kind of like bothering me. Oh, that's nice. Like <laughs> when it. your shoulders are bare and you have long hair, it kind of tickles. And so I didn't want to start laughing inappropriately. Yeah, see, I'm <laughs> not going to touch any part of that. So anyway. Okay, so the uh, the last line, which I think is more interesting, no part of the U.S., Northwest, South, etc., has more died in the wool flat earthers than any other. It's straight, it's straight throughout. The numbers don't change no matter where you go. It's not a regional thing. So, yeah, the, the numbers are right. And it's, it's throwing them. They absolutely don't know what to do with this. In fact, the 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 last part, as they're commenting before they, they shut down the article, it's not clear at present why the 18 to 24-year-olds year old, are more likely than others to doubt the shape of the planet. It's possible that the current political climate of post-truth along with the misuse of social media are fueling the fires. But this is uncomfortably juxtaposed with the fact that millennials, a loosely defined group of young adults that often mistakenly include teenagers, are better educated than the last three generations of Americans. So the scientists don't know what to do with this. I A couple of things about this article that I thought were weird. The part about that People who are involved with Flat Earth, most of them uh, identify as being religious, bothered me. Because well, they, I, but they, I see all sorts of different types of people involved in Flat Earth, and not all are quote-unquote religious. It, most of them, though, do belong. That that goes along. Remember my stats that I threw out, oh boy, a couple well, years saying ago. saying that there's a creator believing in God after you've come to this, even if you were an atheist before or whatever, it's totally different than being religious. Religious might... Okay, you're you're just objecting. You're going objecting. to a church or mosque or something, right? You're objecting to the term. I don't basically. like the word religious. Uh, to, uh, as what, a what, what, what are you going to cover all of us? Because gonna, that's what my brother said when I told him about flat Earth and sent him videos uh, in 2015. He said, uh, "You haven't become a crazy Christian now, have you?" First way, place he went was crazy Christian, which uh, uh, but that's only because he's in America. If he was in the Middle East, he'd do Islam. If he was in India, crazy he'd Islam, choose, <laughs> or Islamic he'd, person. He'd choose <laughs> Hindu and so yeah. on and so on. Well, but so, still uh, that. Uh, this shouldn't be the first place people jump when they hear about flat earth. They shouldn't say, oh, now you are religious. It's the only word. And don't get me wrong. I am not debating with you over this, mostly because it's your show, is that <laughs> uh, it's the only one word. Remember, it's all about sound bites. It's the only one word term you can use for this. What are you going to say? Church based? You're going to say believes in a creator? That's too long. I, I like believes in a creator much better. I... But then again, I didn't write the article gotcha. and had but no say All they're saying there, if you guys look at the stats, all they're saying is eight out of 10, if you boil it down. And then again, that, that goes with our numbers is that is if you believe in flat earth, you're, you're believing in some sort of higher power because it's not an organic world at that point. Now you're not necessarily saying that it's a giant white guy with a beard and a bathrobe walking around in sandals uh, or a blue person. From the Hindu, you know, or, or Bilu, I don't know, <laughs> or a Portuguese speaking alien that hides in the bushes down in Brazil. Well, I also objected to another aspect of this article, which is when they did the survey of the US adults. Remember, this is the United States only, but I imagine it's the same in most oh, countries yeah, yeah, yeah. that they asked about the world being round, yeah, instead of a sphere or a globe. And many people who like the AE map or other maps except a round flat shape so it is a bit confusing with all of the use of the word round i'm getting sick of it. i know i know at least the guy the person in the article mentioned the oblate spheroid yes later on but, but yeah remember we are the ones that know if you're in the club you know that round isn't the the proper term to be used so anyone outside they've got to be schooled on it and they'll get it eventually but the media love jumping on round I correct him whenever I can. I'm going to be correcting a team tomorrow. So, 
Oh, we'll have to hear about that. Yes, One last thing about this article is mm -hmm. it said that generally speaking, the older someone in the US is the less likely they are to have any flat earth beliefs. Uh, I'm checking in at 55 years old, and I know there are people my age and older involved in this into their 70s. So do you think it's true? I mean, it, let's just look at our live chat right now. Is everybody 18 to 24 years old. Well, that's just it. You know, our I mean, demographic in we've the got chat, it all over the place. But our 18, 20 to four in this in our section, the, the circles we deal with. I mean, you went to, we've done meetups and done the conference. 18 mm -hmm. 24 is not the majority. So it's interesting that that group is basically just accepting it and not really getting involved. Well, not publicly with uh, the in this at the same level that we are. Is it because of social media? Now, I know they gave a lot of different reasons why they thought in the article. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they live on it. They, oh. the, it's so a link is sent to them, and I'm sure it's repetitive. So it's it's not just like, you know, we get emails like, hey, have you seen this? I'm sure they have multiple friends. It's like, hey, have you seen this? Like, yes, I've seen the Flat Earth thing. Or they're or they on get, you now, and somebody on you now talks about Flat Earth for a few minutes, and they just, uh, yeah, you know, that's possibly true. Links it's, are shared a lot, and they spend most of their day on social media they're hooked on it so why not why wouldn't they be tied to it it is it is an interesting stat though i mean i honestly the numbers are encouraging to say the least like, yeah well i mean i'm pretty happy about it and i know you are too so yeah. um yeah you know we are i can't really say we're winning although i like to say that we are definitely making some noise we're getting the message out there yeah. to what end i do not know i don't know yeah. what will happen when more people wake up to uh, the flat earth reality the best part of this story is that other science groups will latch on to it because it is it is they were the ones that came up with it in the first place they were curious enough to say hey, let's go out and run a poll let's run a census yeah probably shouldn't have done that Speaking of probably shouldn't have done that, uh, the people who made the Convex Earth documentary, which by now everyone has seen, probably shouldn't have left on one of their associated channels the right. interview, well, I don't know if it was an interview, but it was Bilu, was an alien behind bushes, speaking with uh, the the main guy, Yoranda Fernandez de Oliveira, aka UFO. Right. Um, I don't know if that's the best thing to leave on your channel, if you want people to take you seriously, unless Belu's real and that was real and they're leaving it on their channel because it's truth. The whole Belu thing has got me scratching my head, but I have heard a rumor that on Globusters this coming Sunday, Bob and Jaron and Iru and uh, maybe even John the Morgyle, I'm not sure who else, might be having a couple of Convex Earth documentary creators on there who will clear up the whole Belu thing. Now, I don't know if that's 100% that that will be the subject of Globusters because, you know, with something as touchy as this whole Belu thing and the Convex Earth documentary, the people can agree to go on one day and then the next day decide, and eh, no, you know, we don't want the stress. But keep uh, watching this space and... I know that Bob of Globusters is in the live chat, and uh, Bob, let me know if it's on at this point. Uh, I mean, again, it it's not going to necessarily. Yes, of course, the trolls jumped on it pretty quickly. It's like, oh, you know, Portuguese speaking alien in the bushes with a squeaky, silly Muppet voice. Not even a good Muppet voice. Other than that, though, the production, the the first hour of it. In fact, if I had to recommend, if I, I, I don't think I'm going to put it on my channel, but if I was going to do it, I would just chop the first hour, show that with the experiments, and that's it. And then, you know, good night, everybody, and, and be done with it. Because the experiments are done in a detailed enough form that it comes off pretty professional. I got, I got that. You well, know, the laser test, the visual test. Yeah, but get this. When I was watching it myself, now for yeah. a while we knew it was coming out because they did these teaser videos saying it was coming out sometime in March, but we didn't get an exact date. Right. And, um, you know, I, I got messages from various people, DITRH, for example, saying, you know, I got a bad feeling about this. And then, you know, we were discussing, well, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Of course, you've got to wait and see. You can't prejudge. It comes out. And then... I remember watching 35, 36 minutes before anything actually happened. Right. And it reminded me of those ancient alien shows. Ancient I don't alien, watch TV, yeah. but it reminded me of that, okay. where um, there's a lot of hype and, uh, you know, like, as if there's going to be a commercial message next, and then they they hype you up that this is going to happen, and then they, they never actually deliver. They didn't show 
any experiments nor did they reveal the actual nature of the experiments and the, and the, and the information that was gathered the data that was gathered the numbers right. they just said they did them you and i could say we did experiments here and put a bunch of very very you know important sounding music behind it i know i know Are they really at the same time experiments to, to, did to, they really do them to the layman uh, at the very least it was an instructional on how to do said experiments you know, whether you're going to be shooting boats uh, during the day, you're going to be doing lasers at night, you're going to be doing GPS on buildings and whatever the other one was. I um, I don't think it's going to hurt us. Well, no, uh, I don't think it's going to hurt us either. But Bob did say of Globusters, yes, this Sunday, that's what's going to happen. A couple of guys from Convex Earth will be discussing. And so all of us discussing what they should have done, what they could have done. Is it a is it a whole devious plot to make flat earthers look stupid, et cetera, et cetera. No, no, um, no. If, if, that'll all be put to rest pretty much if, if, on Sunday, maybe. If you're, you're going to do a devious plot to unhinge the flat earth community, you're going to do it in America. It's never going to happen anyway. There's point, no way. No way point, to stop. Point blank. Plus, it's too late. It, that That... Uh, how many versions can I use there? <laughs> that horse is out of the barn. The <laughs> cat's out of the bag. Genie's out of the bottle. Blah, blah, blah. There, there's nothing they could do. I know. I think they were just bandwagoning the whole thing. They were just jumping on this. Like, oh, and, and then really working on it seven years. Really? So they, do you think they just straight up lied? About how long they were working on it or just lied about everything? Almost lied about everything. I've got a, oh God, I shouldn't say because it's rude, but kind of got a feeling that the whole Bilu thing was made up. And then later, they just sort of used that idea to come up with what they did, and they didn't actually do any of the experiments. Or maybe I mean, the but that's horrible. I shouldn't say that. I have no if proof. Going, if you're going for attention and you're going for a market that is not as saturated, South America is a good place. And so you think that they made this thing in order to make some bucks? Sure. Eventually, if it got sold to some kind of—I mean, look at the way, yeah, look at the way it was filmed. It was filmed. It was taken straight from our playbook, uh, television shows of the late '90s, early 2000s, the whole ancient alien thing. They even they used aspects of things that uh, Jaron and others had spoke of yeah. in their documentary. They and, you also. Know, I, I hate to say because I saw the, some of the people in there, and they looked so sincere. But yet, where's the facts? Where's the where's the numbers? Right. That's what I would put in my documentary if I were making one. I would too. So that's but. why I'm not making a documentary though, <laughs> because that's hard work. And it's much easier to create some kind of weird, crazy story and some kind of ancient aliens format thing and then put it out there and you know, basically throw it against the wall and see if it sticks. Yeah. And again, they might get attention in a market that we wouldn't. So I, I think, and, and at the very least, and I know it'd be naysayers at the very least, it increases the metrics because we have, oh my gosh, we have a, a channel name in our live chat and the channel name is as above. So be Lou. <laughs> That's funny. And the comment from this person who's very creative writes, be Lou speaks pretty good Portuguese. Well, it never <laughs> ceases to amaze me. The power of the internet cleverness. I saw a video that Stephen Chess, who's also in our live chat, uh, did yesterday where he talked about how the uh, the Chinese space station that fell crashed and killed Bilu. So I would re I would recommend anybody go to Stephen Chess's channel. That's S-T-E-P-H-E-N. We're not uh, going to talk about the Chinese thing, are we? <laughs> we already talked about it last week. Oh, well, you know, we didn't really. Nothing happened, though. The, the oh, that's right. We toasted to our, in French. our I mean, eventual. The, uh, demise. And yet inevitable <laughs> demise and it never happened yeah of course it landed or uh, supposedly of course it never did it was never there but it crashed somewhere over water of course right is, but um, i mean supposedly earth's mostly water anyway so that would be common that that would occur but yeah, yeah. where are the meteors by the way that that strike the, the oceans on a regular basis if they have like a seven out of ten chance of hitting water Where's the we? proof of anything? Yeah. Here I mean, we, sh we should see like some, <laughs> freak, some freak tsunamis every once in a while from, from meteors. You know, thank goodness the globe isn't real because all the things that they say could happen at any moment are horrible and frightening and I dangerous. Know. If I was an actual astronomer, I'd be scared to death all the time. I mean, what, you know, I don't really believe Fukushima is what they told us. I don't believe um, that. 
that a super volcano is going to happen and destroy us all. I think this place is far more resilient than that. I agree. So, yeah, I, we're, we're I, tough. We're strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but the place is definitely durable. Yeah. Yeah. We, we humans keep kind of being either killing ourselves or yeah, killing, killing each other. Yeah, yeah. And then we come, we come and go. New civilizations come and go yeah. by the looks of it. Yeah. What else what is else going on? Um, da, 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 da. Oh, the NOAA article that came out with SpaceX right. launching a rocket, but uh, they have prevented uh, some of it from being shown. Um, I know you mentioned that on your show last night. Yeah. Um, you just think this is, like I do, a way that they are covering up the fact that they're not really able to show space by saying, well, NOAA won't let us show space. Or you come right back purpose. and remember how I said that it, it, that the whole SpaceX thing was just a giant test to see how you, if you could fake space on a budget. Do they, don't know? they call that a shit test? Uh, yes. And it, I think it, that everything these days is one of those tests. Yeah, stupid it, you know, movies, which we're going to get to a Star Wars movie a little bit later on. So it's horrible you're gonna, you're plots, gonna you're gonna plot holes, yeah. um, well, and SpaceX, that, but, and but, all but of how it. That, that, See that, if they buy it. See if it flies. Well, not just that, but convince people through fake media reviews. You know, f if you're fudging the numbers, you can convince people of a lot of things that didn't work in, in the jet, I think. But we'll talk about it in a second. The SpaceX Noah thing, I think that because of how badly the SpaceX test, you know, put a car in it and a mannequin in, you know, shoot that, see if people buy it. And they weren't. So now you have oh, an, enough an, people did buy it. I mean, there no. wasn't any sort of great protest. No, no. I've but seen so, very but, few articles, if any, aside from those done by flat earthers, social media saying though, that that was a bunch of garbage spread it around and it didn't get as much hype as it should have. Right. Meaning, but the average Joe or Jane thinks that happened if they paid any attention at all. If Look, I mean, here's an article that we're speaking of. The NOAA just prevented SpaceX from showing its rocket in orbit right. by ARS Technica. And I've linked that in the description box. This thing starts off with saying, on Friday morning, SpaceX successfully launched a Falcon 9 rocket into space and later deployed 10 Iridium communication satellites into low Earth orbit as planned. Right. These people are buying all of it, all of the lies. But at the same time, NOAA, and you guys don't know who that is, it's the NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Interesting, on, NOAA, almost like Noah's Ark. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's a big accident there. Also based out of Boulder, Colorado. I walked by those, their offices all the time on my way to the movies. Interesting. Yeah. The you, you didn't really realize they're part of a whole movie. <laughs> that's it's, all over yeah, our I didn't. I didn't realize that that has they had as as much pull. And it's like, okay, why would they have jurisdiction over SpaceX? Why wouldn't the Atmospheric and Transportation Safety Bureau? Why not NASA? Why not? I don't know a whole slew of other government groups. Why NOAA of all people? It's like uh, I would think they just care. You know, they measure atmospheric pollution levels and ozone and crap like that. Water, you know, ocean levels. Why, why would they care about what cameras are being used on a private space company? Uh, I don't think they do. I think there's like, well, we can delay the whole thing. And now, now if SpaceX sends something else up. We can limit the amount of cameras they mm -hmm. have on them. Right. So we don't have to show it as much. It's like, well, you're going to, that's going to be a little tougher to pull off, especially since you're going to try to do a moon mission eventually. Although SpaceX isn't talking about that anymore. Remember they were supposed to this year and it's already April. Right. Supposed to slingshot some people around the moon, some tourists. We don't have pilots. We don't have tourists. We don't have a capsule. Just Elon Musk talking out his ass. We just have lies and lies upon lies upon lies. lies. And anyway, all those lies an, build the globe. It's an interesting story. Thank you to Josh from California, who was the first one to not notify me about it. And that's you guys Uber Josh. Uber Josh. Yeah. Look, at, look it up. If you get a chance, it's an interesting article. I don't know. Yeah, you know, will will we see more of it in the future? Yeah, maybe, or maybe we'll just see less in the future. Meaning SpaceX will say, "Oh yeah, we launched a rocket. Here's a computer animation of it." Yeah, yeah we could, because we're not allowed to actually show any real footage. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a great excuse. My God, they come up with some good ones. The Hollywood writers who work for, <laughs> they obviously do. Let's be real. Who who work for the space agencies, even if it's a private space agency, who come up with these lies? I mean, who came up with the whole Starman idea? 
you know, in a dark room with a bunch of men and women in suits sitting around figuring out how to fool us. I mean, I don't know how and when they the, do this sort of thing. But they come up with some real corkers. The the, the concept of the, the star man idea was- It's stupid. Well, it's no, no, totally no. The, the, the general concept isn't bad. Where you screw up is how they executed it meaning three different camera angles, everything was too clear, you should have stripped down the car or put logos. There's, you know, I mean, we we talked about that. There's yes. so many things you could have done better when it came to it. But yeah, overall, you probably shouldn't have put a mannequin in, up there in the first place. That just doesn't seem like in a real world what a private or public space agency would ever do with their time and money. No. It's not what we do. But then again, look at the ISS, a gorilla suit football jerseys, a guitar, little paddle so they can bat water back and forth. You never see them do any science. A flute? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess the flute's okay. Why would the flute be okay? <laughs> Why? I mean, the guitar makes no sense because it's uh, it's mostly hollow. And yeah. a gorilla suit, that's just silly. That's just dumb. The whole thing's dumb. And people are like, oh, cool. Let's send up all the NFL jerseys. Yeah, because we don't really know which, one, which team's going to win. Number one, sports is all controlled and especially the you know the big not the as big much events. baseball but yes basketball and football absolutely you can you can rig it basketball and football has been rigged really since it became big money when the when the sneaker companies got involved well let's talk a little bit about the youtube shooting and i want to put the word shooting in um quotations because there's been a lot of information that i've seen and heard people talking about that make it seem as if this is another event that didn't happen as they've told us i very uh, treading treading on you know i think broken it was glass here but i think it was just really i just think it was because you know eventually sooner or later you know the whole cry wolf thing you're gonna run into something well and, Real things happen sometimes. And this was so low key. I mean, it was it wasn't a that low key when you look into the woman, this 39 year old Nassim Agadam, who lived in San Diego. Uh, if you've seen her, uh, her um, YouTube channel or her Instagram, which are now down, but some people, you know, grabbed some pictures of that and video. The woman was very interesting let's just say well, sure. um, interesting but weird um, pas passionate people often are yeah but she wasn't doing lots of passionate yelling and screaming she was doing ab exercises wearing all sorts of very dramatic looking clothing posing with animals um the fact that she is a vegan activist is one thing and then with the gun is another thing that to a lot of vegans that doesn't really make any sense as most vegans are not into violence not of course some are of course um we don't really know what the whole story is supposedly she had a relationship with a man and she shot him and then a couple of women there and um but a lot of people were saying when they were watching the whole scene itself prior to finding out who she was, things didn't look right. And there was a gentleman, uh, an older gentleman with gray hair who was being interviewed by the mainstream media and he was telling some crazy story, calling a shooter a shotter. Of course, some people don't know how to speak that well. In fact, all of us sometimes don't speak that well. He was at a Carl's Jr. fast food restaurant across the street. And Stephen Chess, who is a firearms kind of expert like you are, Mark. Um, he definitely has some some big time guns. And it, like I said, is in our chat, told me something that made me think. This guy on the news was saying that he was at the Carl's Jr. and he heard gunshots and ran, left his fast food restaurant and ran across the street. Maybe he took it to go and went to see what was going on. Stephen said what most people do in a real situation when gunshots are happening is run away. Even if somebody close to you or friends of yours are shot, for the most part, people are, it, what takes over is your adrenaline and your, 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 your desire to preserve your own life. And you, you will run away from gunshots. You don't run toward them. So. True. True. There's a uh, lot about this that I'm unsure of. I, I I don't know what the reason that they would do something like this if mm, they did. Um, of course, you know, more of the gun thing. In fact, is it even on CNN right now? Hang on. The My take on it is, is pretty simple, which is I think it was just a CNN. Hang on one second. 
a relationship gone wrong. Very wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, one, one woman. One, in fact, it's not even. It's not one even. One gun. Freaking, it's literally. <laughs> we're twenty four hours later. It's not even a. It's not even on the top five headlines on CNN. It was just weird, and it involves it, YouTube. It was a party at YouTube. Yeah, well, that's the only reason it got no, it got before, play yeah. is because right. it was YouTube. Well, and, she was supposedly mad because her videos were getting demonetized, and I know a lot of YouTube content uh, creators are also oftentimes angry because of that, but not not enough. And then why did she shoot the man? What did he have to do with her videos being demonetized? Uh, hell hath no fury. Like I think a woman a demonetized? Sin. Exactly. <laughs> Look, you, you, when it comes to men, all right, I will keep this short. Men talk a lot of crap. Okay? They, they talk about all sorts of stuff they never do. When a woman says something, it's like, you know what I should do? You know, when they get that look in their eye, I swear to God, you have to take them somewhat seriously because they won't even say it unless they, they're willing to go down that path. Remember that thing when I was in a university years and years ago and a woman, good Lord, she wasn't even 19. And and she said, if you cut me out of your organization, you know, the thing, the fireworks thing, she goes, I'm going to drop the dime on you and call the feds. Whoa. And she did. <laughs> it's like she, she even blink literally that next day that's exactly what she did so put it to put it past a woman is like if you you know whoever this woman is if you mess with me in, insert romantic interest here who may work i don't know if she worked there or if if she no there. not as far as i've been able to find well no somebody had to work there Oh, maybe one the guy of, she one shot of, one it. Of the victims. Yeah. You know, you go in and it's like, that's the last time you're going to do this. You're blam, blam, blam. And then, you know, maybe she knew again, if there's other, the other people that weren't injured were women. Yeah. You know, where are the odds? It's like, you know, it's like, oh, don't think I forget about you. Kablam, kablam. You know, and, and then it's like, and he goes, you'll, you'll pay for this. And she goes, oh no, I'm not going to prison for the likes of you. Kablam, blam, blam. And then that's it. And she probably didn't fire three times. But, you know, I'm getting that. I mean, it, I, I just see it as sort of a domestic situation that went wrong. And, yeah. and, and I mean, they, they glossed over it. It's not even a thing. I don't think the media was supposed to ever latch on to it. It was only because it was a YouTube office that it even got traction at all. And as of today, the, the lead headline is Trump sending National Guards to the border. That's his new thing. We're going to send military. We're going to put military on the border to Mexico. That's right. This. Well, that's what happens, you know, in all news, even these big supposed psyops that happen. Um, I mean, who's talking about any of those things now? But this one, was, this one was tiny. Yeah, I, mean, I know. Was, I know. But it was weird. It was very weird, especially when you watched videos with her in them. She was unusual looking. That's yeah, for sure. I know. And you know what? There's that people are saying, oh, she's transgender. Or, oh, she's a she's AI. She's like that Sophia robot. And I, I'm like, OK. That's kind of crazy. Mm, yeah. and, but she and had a was, YouTube channel up for quite some time. She was East, that name, that's East Indian, right? Pretty sure? That I don't know. I don't I, think she's Middle Eastern. Otherwise, they would have leapt on that a little I more. I think she might have been Iranian. Could be wrong there. Really? I think I mentioned it earlier. Yeah, somebody wrong. find out. What what nationality was she? Not that um, it makes any difference. I could have sworn, though, she was East Indian. It was just, a, and then, you know, some yeah. were like, oh, well, maybe that's just an excuse for Trump to go kill people. In and other uh, the other thing was, it, it did involve an AR-15. That's true. It, it did. It's like, look, women, that is one thing I absolutely know. Women bring handguns to a fight. They right. do not bring rifles. Because you can just slip it into your handbag. Absolutely. No one will know. Nobody, and nobody even questions. It, like, even the metal detectors, if it was there, it'd be like, yeah, yeah, purse, whatever. They're not even going to look. It's like, it's not like she's packing. No. Do we Do we even know the model of, of what she's I using? didn't see that in, in any story. No, I did not. Because most women will choose a, a small caliber revolver. Yeah, that doesn't have a lot of kickback. Not a lot of kick and something small, something, you know. Something hot pink? Ugh. No, no. I think those pink handled guns are ridiculous. So do I. And you know, I know. Like, yeah. Like, who are you really? No. No. Ask ask Karen. You know. Yeah, Karen would be like, I, I I spit on the hot pink yeah. guns. <laughs> <laughs> That's Karen B we're speaking of, who I actually knows her gun. knows her way around a firearm. I'd throw it into a barrel and pour it full of gasoline and, you know. Exactly. I eat, I eat pink handguns for breakfast. <laughs> Something to that. Yes. So, yeah. Anyway, interesting little story, but it's gone. So I didn't even, I didn't even give it 
Well, I know. I don't think I ever even clicked on a link for when the story was out there in the last 24 hours. A lot of people have uh, conspiracies as to why the Concord was um, put to bed. The Concord, um, the noise factor, some people say that that was the reason or the cost for the fuel, et cetera. Um, but there's a new, there's a new plane in town. For a new plane? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a new plane being put out by NASA along with Lockheed Martin. And they're making jets that travel faster than the speed of sound, but are about as loud as a car door closing. NASA just gave Lockheed Martin a $247.5 million contract. To research this? Yeah. They want to produce an X plane. <laughs> Whatever. Without a unified field, you're not going to do it. The sound barrier is the sound barrier. Yet. You have to completely do it, use a different technology. You cannot do it with a jet plane. Oh, by the way, that is why why the Concorde, the, we should all be flying in Concords all the time. Yeah, well, the sonic boom going the over populated boom. areas it, is they, one of the things. Noise pollution, livestock but mostly. If the Concorde was around, we could take a ton of people up and go look no curve. A, a lot more than the planes that, that we have now. Um, because you know, you get that a lot when you find somebody who's new to flat earth, they'll say things like, well, you ever fly in an airplane? I see the curve from the window. Or I had a guy arguing with me about the fact that, well, he flew on the Concorde and he could see the curve there. Whatever. I never did. So it, that's why I can't see it. I look, I still have people that say they could see the curve from the beach and a mountain and a tall building and crap like that. I it's was like, on no, a two story no. building once and I could see the curve. <laughs> It was a curve of the drinking glass. Anyone <laughs> <was using> knows <laughs> the the whole again. I'll use the Star Trek reference. You know, seeing five lights. Look it up. Five lights versus four lights. If you're told that it's you know it's a certain thing for a long enough time, you are going to want to see it. Again, it's not that you can see the curve. You want to see the curve. Your brain absolutely wants to see it because that's what you're taught. You're you're told to yes. believe this. It's an illusion. It's extremely tough to break out of. Well, remember that that came out in maybe 2015. What color is the dress? Is the dress blue? Is the dress white? It was this meme oh, that yeah, was going yeah, yeah. around. Black and gold versus white whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. Something. A lot of people wanted to try to see it a certain way or they would you know, condemn others for seeing it a different way. That's a fascinating thing. If you ever get the chance, watch some videos on people that are standing right next to each other looking at the same dress on the exact same computer monitor. And people will, you know, it's like, no, it's a white dress. It's like, are you high? It was see, it, it brought about actual arguments, fights, yeah. with people, you know, yelling at each other and yeah. hitting each other over the head with their handbags. And Maybe it not. Goes, close. goes into my whole projection thing, which is who's right in that case, the black dress or the white dress. It, it's like then you're going, then you kind of get into the whole philosophical thing. It's like, okay, you have 10 people, seven people see black, three of them see white. Are the ones that see black, are they correct because they're in the majority? What if it's split down the middle? Then what do you do? I mean, it's a it's a tough, tough thing. It makes but you think about colors and how do we all perceive them the same way? Is my green your green? It's one of the it's well, the dress isn't one of the actually the dress was one of the things was one of the big reasons I did Clue 12. Yeah, I was just thinking about Clue 12. Tell everybody about that in case they don't remember. Yeah, yeah. I remember most of the clues, most of the people that replicated the clues did clues one through eleven, and then twelve, which was realized was recommended to me that was inspired by John um, Jonathan Masi Jonathan of Jonathan of Jersey who we don't John know where he is if anyone knows let us know Jonathan of Jersey <laughs> Jonathan from Jersey right in middle ages <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan of, Jersey. of Jersey dilly dilly you know <laughs> that whole thing the um fetch me a flask <laughs> shopkeep your a tanker of your finest mead the no he was the one that said hey you should do something on illusions and i said yeah perception is a, is amazingly powerful thing and i went over the the dress and you know the dragon that his eyes would follow you no matter where you went and of course the basketball players which was fantastic because that's what you're focused on and the what i tried to drill into people's heads were the thing that everybody misses but if you drive you get it and that is we human beings as a species cannot tell 
if we're moving or the object next to us is moving. It happens to me all of the time. Trains, on trains, when on you're planes. In a car, you're stopped. The yep. car next to you goes backward or forward. And for a moment, you have that physical feeling. It's not just a mental feeling of yeah. like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. You, it's, you, you're literally looking. It's like, oh, great. Did I hit the brakes? Did I hit the gas? Yeah. I'm sure accidents happen because of this. Oh, yeah. Somebody going, puts their foot on the brake or the gas when they get that feeling. Yeah. No. Yeah. And it's because we, they did tests on this. You, I, and somebody can call up the university test. What I can't remember which one it was, but they would put people in these wooden cars and, you know, in a room and they would either move the wall in front of them or move the car. You know, they didn't even do side by side crap. And the people literally had no idea. It was, it was a complete crap shoot, whether they could tell if they were moving or the, the wall was moving. And the, in fact, the only time they could ever figure it out is if they, they moved it too fast, like if they generate G force. And even then that's that, that can be simulated by just tipping the seat back, which is why they use that in amusement parks nowadays for simulations, flight simulators work on that premise. All you do is tip the seat back and it feels like you're climbing in a flight simulator. Hmm. You ever been in a flight simulator? No, I was just thinking about it though. I've seen videos with people in flight simulators before and yeah. They also do that at some of the Disney rides. Yeah, and I was thinking about the um, oh, you know, the movies that you can see where they uh, the seats move and everything yeah, moves. Yeah, what are those yeah. called? Uh, uh, yeah, sure, a little reality type. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, we can simulate a lot of stuff, but human beings, it's almost like, it's not like almost. We are we are designed to fall for illusions. Absolutely, we we are born into it. Well, we, we fell for the globe. Yeah, that was easy. And a lot of us fall for people in our life that are horrible, that everyone will say, oh my God, no, don't, don't, don't. And you're like, oh no, he or she's great. Then later you're like, why didn't I listen? I, yeah, are no, we just I don't, don't want to be too critical there, but I consider women to be great decision makers with the exception of men, <laughs> the men well. they spend time with. Sometimes I think women and maybe men, we want to believe the best about a person. Exactly. Yeah. That you, you have more hope than, than to, <laughs> we're well, more delusional. Like, well, you know, it's like, oh, it'd be great. You know, and all of a sudden you hear the birds and the, you know, yeah, exactly. Hear singing and picking apples off of trees and exactly fantasy and life and animated takes over stuff. and you forget about the reality that you're dealing with. Yeah. That's pretty much it. until you just can't deal with it anymore. <laughs> Seriously. You can almost hear, I can almost hear it whispered underway, you know, happily ever after. Mm. Yeah. Funny. Anyway. What um, else we, uh, oh, I want to say thank you to Chris Topher who created the thumbnail that will be on this video after it makes it to YouTube. Uh, if I make my own thumbnails, sometimes Mark makes them for me, but if I you want to contribute, you in a while, I know, but I've um, made a lot. So screw yeah, it. you have, <laughs> but if you would like to contribute a thumbnail to the video, just the picture itself in the right size or any size, I can probably make it work. Um, just send it to mystery at gmail.com and I will give you credit. Uh, five arts liberalis makes some good ones for me as well. So anyway, yeah. Um, oh, I was mentioning earlier that CC is my guest uh, on the show tomorrow, which is April 5th, 2018, here at 6 p.m. And we have another guest coming up next Thursday, which is Mark, M-A-R-C, a.k.a. Zulu One. I'm going to interview Zulu One, who's in our live chat, not this, but next Thursday. So that's two good shows to look forward to. Never heard of him. Yeah, I don't know who he is either. No. <laughs> Um, I want to say hello to those in the live chat, including Authentic Intent. He did some really interesting videos lately, but one that I, caught my attention because he was walking through a park area and there was a bunch of people gathered. And one of them was a, a vegan guy. And they got in a conversation about veganism, the Bible, and flat earth. And it's very interesting to hear both perspectives. And the man that he ran into was a very intelligent person. So um, check out Authentic Intent. And just, you never know when you're watching an Authentic Intent video, who he's going to run into, what kind of interaction is going to happen. Because, hey, it's real life after all. Right. Um, Skyfly Bry, hello. Sean G, hey. Uh, Nathan Oakley, hello there. And um, Zulu1 says, I like Zulu. <laughs> Of course, you like yourself. Um, 
Ryan Q. Vincent says that falling for the globe was not easy. They had to change the education system to the trust experts, says they have already answered all the questions and push that we live on the globe. I have an email that was sent to me, but I think it was supposed to be sent to you as well. Mm. It is about, and we is have- Is it another death threat with somebody talking about a uh, knife? 24 centimeter knife? No. And then saying he was sorry about that. Uh, I was That's on the glass hit, last night. I was hitting the glass. Whatever. As opposed to hitting the pipe again, confusing crack with meth. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no. No. In yes, this case, these are those. These are the type of people who listen to the show. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the listeners. Yeah, gotta the, love them. Uh, <laughs> no, this one was called uh, Toronto Meetup Suggestions because we haven't picked anything for Toronto yet. Oh, you know what? We need to get on that. I know. I know, I know. it's the thirtieth. We got, we got time. April, well, we're still. But, We've I'm not got, in Toronto or Canada, and you're kind of close to Canada, but you're not I, there. No, no, that's, that's, it's kind of that's over on the east side of Toronto. Of, we need suggestions. So well, okay, well, let me read this real quick. Hey, Mark, it's well, it's, uh, her name's Patricia. Uh, Patricia from really Souk, British Columbia. We met here last year when you came to speak. I just saw your call out for Toronto ideas. Check out the Steam Whistle Brewery. You guys will sounds be right nice. near the distillery district. That sounds like that fun. sounds convenient uh, <laughs> or a recipe for disaster for us from the drug district. It would be where they have glass on special fabulous <laughs> two for one meth. It would be a fabulous meetup location. Personally, I would go to the lakeshore of Queens Quay if it is a nice enough day. Make sure you get the top of the CN Tower as well. You can see Buffalo on a clear day. And let me know when you're coming back to visit Souk. Keep up the great work. Patricia, can you believe I actually did a meetup in Souk, British Columbia? Which is S-O-U-K? Is that how you pronounce it? S-O-O-K-E. Oh. And of course, I kept pronouncing it wrong because being American and following True Blood, the television series, the lead character's name was Sookie. Oh, I get and it. So, And they always, it's like Sook. So and like, I thought you meant souk like a marketplace, which nope, is it's souk. So you can really they kept correcting me, and then they. So correct. it must be a native, uh, a native people's word. Tribe, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would imagine. So I hopefully not related to Eskimos. Anyway, so the so she recommends the Steam Whistle Brewery, and if you guys know what we're talking about, Patricia and I are going to be out at the Toronto Hot Docs Film Festival at the end of this month. And we're going to do a meetup in Toronto on the 30th of April. So we got to, yeah, we'll have to get on that. And, and yeah. we'll, we'll put the promos out. Everyone, people know that we're going to be there. We just have to pick a place and it'll be, it'll be really cool. Um, oh, we want to thank Carl Stenbeck because he, along with Flat Earth Uber, got that article uh, pertaining to to you yesterday on your show on strange world. I just wanted to thank Carl as well, because it wasn't right. just a uh, Josh flat earth Uber that got that article to you that we mentioned earlier. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny how we speak to each other sometimes, like an old married couple sometimes. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you said yeah, yeah, yeah to any just random person in the street when they were trying to tell you something, they would think it was very, very rude. They might. But we're just like that. So, um, We've got uh, Synthetic Dread, Musicians for Truth. He's got a couple different names. He says he lives near Souk, and it's very beautiful, I imagine. Um, yeah. What else is going on? Jamaican Titan is here. He's asking me how I'm doing. I'm doing great. Mike Allen, as well, um, is in our live chat. Did I mention Jimmy Jedi? Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. But hello. Um, I think I might have mentioned Nathan Oakley. Sean G., Racer Effie for life. Uh, DITRH has a comment about D Murphy 25's latest video. Uh, he said, uh, check it out. He needs some opinions from others on the video. And it looked like a very controversial title, and I've not yet watched it, and I will after this show. Hey, plant based comedian is in our live chat. Hello. Uh, sub that channel. It's awful, awful funny. Plant based comedian run together the words plant-based comedian and check out what he does. Uh, he does a very good Trump impersonation. He wants to get a South Florida meetup going. So, I mean, a plant-based comedian, all you need to do is get it together yourself. 
email Mark Sargent at msargent23 at comcast.net. He'll make a promo video for the meetup and then people will show up there. You don't really need to do anything except pick a time and a place. I'm already do. I'm also Let doing Mark do all the work. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'll do it as long as I can. And I mean, if I'm not too busy, somebody sent me, you got to give me some advance notice. Like this guy just sent me one and he wants me to do a meetup thing for Memphis this weekend. Well, you could. I, I, I got time. I can do it. The thing is, is that people don't realize that you do these things from the goodness of your heart. And I know a lot of people are very grateful, but you know, there's a couple of people out there in the world of flat earth who aren't as appreciative of all the good things that you do offer the community. And I just want to, I just want to big you up as they say. Uh, well, <laughs> thank you. And again, I'm, you know, you know me and, and my mantra and that is treat others better than you treat yourself. And uh, why wouldn't I help others pay it forward? I'm all over that for sure. So let's see what else is ginger sugar bush is here as well. And he's going to be, uh, definitely at our uh, Toronto meetup for sure. Um, what fun. else? Oliver Carrera is here. Um, all is one now in the live chat. And there's CC in the live chat. So if you just see the letter CC with no punctuation in the live chat, that's the guy that'll be on the show tomorrow, April 5th. Um, what else? What else? Smiley Chris is here. Oh, and Zoe of Be Here in Love. Um, hmm, so many people and I don't want to, oh, I want to, uh, say hi to Zane. Zane is the guy who in many flat earth videos writes a poem. He is usually an amazing of... poem that has something to do with the video itself or the people in the video. And I always like the ones he puts on my channel, uh, as mm -hmm. a comment. He's done a lot of songs and, mm -hmm. uh, just seems like a nice person, you know, Yep. which is definitely a good thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Hannah Colby is here and new, I think, at least I've not seen Hannah Colby before, who says, hey, everyone, much love. Like that as a greeting. Uh, Cami is here of the Globusters crew, or Aisling717, that's her name. Uh, Bob of Globusters says, mix CC with some seven and you have a winner. <laughs> Bringing it all back to drinking again. You know, CC adds up to 33, supposedly, so... Yeah, yeah, third letter of the alphabet twice. Absolutely. <laughs> Too bad it's not show number 33 or 233. Oh, well, that would have been funny, but really, not really. <laughs> um, Paula Knowledge Scavenger is here too, and Timaeus. And Magscent is here. Um, let's see, Sleeping Warrior. And oh, Carly Sunshine here too. Uh, Dirge is in the dark. And uh, I know I've missed a few people. I don't want to miss anybody. Flat Accord Music is here too. I think I might have mentioned Bill Keith before. And Wesley State's Flat Earth News Talk is here. Flat Earth Preacher is here. Huh, interesting. Did I say Anders Ace? Don't know if I did, but now I have. Bob Bobrowski is here in page 42, which is not the band level 42. Brian Stavely is here. Hey. Um, Rob Morrill is here saying he's colorblind and also colorblind Nathan Oakley. Uh, since we were talking about colors earlier and what color is the dress, it would kind of be nice to be colorblind. I know you'd miss out on a lot in the world. If you're colorblind, you couldn't have you to even, worry about things matching. Could all. you tell that like the Google is rainbow colored behind me? I don't think you would see. Maybe all of them. you can see shades of colors, supposedly, because uh, I quiz Nathan Oakley on what it's like to be colorblind. Uh, but then again, we. Humans are sort of colorblind too, because there probably are other colors and spectrums that our eyes can't see. Oh well, yeah, you can so, go down that road with the whole predator thing. Yeah, we can't see an ultraviolet, violet, or infrared, and we can't see radio frequencies, television frequencies. There's all sorts of crap we can't see. Yeah, true. Very limited. Um, the afterlife now is here, and Scout Fighter, um, Jason H is here. Um, oh, here's a question, and this comes from Bill Keith. It's directed toward you, Mark, from the live chat. Did Mark talk about his director's cut getting a community guidelines warning added? Did that happen? Uh, I haven't seen it. No, I haven't got. How would Bill actually, Keith know? How does he know is, everything? Is that actually on there? What is, I don't know. What's the Check community it out. guidelines warning for? I don't know. This uh, video might open your mind so big that. Your whole life might change. That's a pretty good warning to put on any flat earth video. 
you look and I'll say hi to Chris Van Maitri and Danny Schwartz. Danny says, check out my Flat Earth song, Garden, Wrapped in Stars. I really actually like that title. Disabled. Free Holy Radical God. says, butterflies see way happen? more colors than us. And how does Bill Keith know? Limited features for certain videos prohibit hate speech? <laughs> hate speech in your video, the director's oh, no. cut, Flat Earth Clues. Yeah, a lot of hate speech in there. You don't swear even in it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to appeal this. That's weird. I I didn't even um. That that's really really strange. Bill says it blew my mind when I saw it. I have a screenshot happened the other day. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I have to go to it now and let me click on this and say appeal. Some when did this happen? I don't know. He noticed it the other day. We've got Flat Jeffy in the chat and Ganaball and Fep Fep and Flat Earth Photographer Please, as well. If you believe the decision was made in error, you may appeal using this form while the YouTube yep. team will review the result. If appropriate, we'll notify you. YouTube him. team minus one who got shot will help help, help you out. <laughs> I want to say hi to Chief Crow in the Flat Earth Rooms who says, I love hash browns. So do I. Thanks for making me hungry. The Hori Sheet Show says, they will not censor our mark. <laughs> All is One now says, hmm, Bill Keith, are you the CIA? Hi to geocentric love. And uh, page 42 has an interesting comment that Bilu works for YouTube as well as NASA. Maybe it's all Bilu's fault. I wonder who flagged it. Just a hater. Yeah. <laughs> Issa Mahalski is here. Hey, how are you? Speaking of people who do music on the flat earth scene, flat accord music is here too. And oh, we've got a lot of musicians, musicians for truth. Um, you know, we got a lot of musicians even in the live chat, let alone on the flat earth. Let's see, there was something else I wanted to bring up. What was it? Sometimes I get caught up in reading this live chat. I lose track of what else I was going to talk about. Oh, I know what it is. It's on my phone. I need to look it up. And you are, look at Mark, how possessed he looks. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> I would work on that. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I got, I'm it doing this now. It would bug me too. It would totally bug me. I wouldn't be able to continue the show. I'd be like, wait a minute. Submit appeal. It was weird was it doesn't show up on any of my, I should have probably looked at, you know, the, the thing that says limited or no ads. It must have just happened. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, ju it just happened recently. So, but I'll, re I'll read it for you guys real quick. Yeah, please, because uh, it is interesting. It's more YouTube censorship for absolutely no reason. It, our community guidelines prohibit hate speech that either promotes violence or the primary. Somebody, somebody doesn't like Flat Earth and they just flagged it. Uh, of inciting hatred against individuals or groups based on certain attributes. I mean, literally, this is just the clues, 1 through 12. Uh, YouTube also prohibits uh, content intended to recruit for terrorist organizations, incite oh, violence. Oh, yeah, that's what you were doing. <laughs> celebrate Hail Hydra, uh, ter terrorist <laughs> attacks, or otherwise promote acts of terrorism. Some borderline videos, such as those <clears throat> containing inflammatory religious or super... Oh, maybe that's what they're doing. Uh, inflammatory religious, although I didn't quote the Bible, or supremacist content without a direct call to violence or a primary purpose of inciting hatred may not cross these lines for removal. Following news reports, if our review teams determines that a video is borderline, uh, it may have some features. Oh, that's why. So it was borderline. And I'm just going to say, uh, no, these videos will remain available on YouTube, will be placed behind a warning message. And some features will be dis disabled, including comments, suggested videos, and likes. So apparently they turned off all the, uh, I think, comments on it. These videos are not eligible for ads. Who cares? If one of the videos has a feature disabled, we will send an email to... That's just it. I never got an email. You can appeal wow. the decision directly from a link. As I'd say, that's one of the bad things about having a yellow flag, is they do not email you. That's, oh. a, that's a bunch of crock. They do not email you about right. that next to the video in the video manager having features disabled will not create a strike yeah i get that i mean it's yellow flagged but nice. still so yellow for chickens yeah i'm gonna click on this thing and see what's that turned. was a bad move youtube yeah let's see so it's turned off following content has been i yes there's a flag so when you click on the video it says identified by the youtube community as inappropriate or offensive to some audience and you can say i yeah people who believe in the globe so much that they they get out and scrap and fight among each other and and they turn off bomb people of they don't they don't let you no suggested videos no comments 
uh, weird. It was very weird. That just um, happened. A guy named Matt in our live chat says, Mark, was it the Eskimo Justice League that filed the complaint? <laughs> no, no. In, in that particular thing, uh, there's no there's no uh, people that, or there's no, there's nothing in there in, in the, the original clue. I mean, you've listened to the clues. Everybody's listened to the clues. No, it's, 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 in fact, if you're going to nail, can be. if you're going to nail that, heck, I should look up, um, like they're hiding God with the greatest lie ever. Well, Jibby Jedi has an excellent point. He says in the live chat, how is it when we flag the real bullies and trolls, their Ooh. videos and channels oh, remain? God, Oh, that sounded drastic. Oh, but, well, know, no, I, right. I thought, no, it was left over from the other screen. I thought they were starting to flag. Well, all of your videos. Yeah, that would be bad. Yeah. Anyway, sorry about that. I was a little distracted by that. I had to. Yeah, but I think it's very interesting because it goes to what we were speaking about earlier. The, uh, the woman who went and shot somebody at YouTube supposedly was angry at YouTube because her videos were demonetized. I mean, it is a subject and YouTube has been cracking down more than before on people. Um, sometimes I have a video set up to do and they demonetize it before the video even starts. And it doesn't mm. have anything in the title other than flat earth and other hot potatoes. And then I, you know, it gets to a thousand views that day. And then I, hit the button and it gets manually reviewed by a person who says nothing wrong here. And then it gets monetized. Although the monetization to me is, I don't even know why I do it. I guess I just do it for fun because you get a couple of pennies from that, <laughs> which is nothing. I, but, I'm, I'm wondering if I, my appeal works or not. It's, it's interesting because it's a completely different flag from the can't be monetized thing. Hmm. It's odd. In fact, I haven't gotten a flag in a long time. I was telling people, I was like, look, I haven't gotten a yellow flag in months. And now they flag the director's cut. Whatever. Whatever. Anyway, hey, I'd like to make a correction from last night. Oh, uh, yes. as, as you guys know, I did a little rant against the whole return. I'm sorry. Um, Last Jedi yes. movie. And I quoted 12%. I was actually wrong. He was 24 not that that makes really any difference. The The point was is that uh, when you go on Rotten Tomatoes, it's still showing up as a popcorn score, 47. And <clears throat> like the YouTube thing, where YouTube is doesn't tell you that they're yellow flagging stuff, YouTube also doesn't tell you. If you, make, uh, you go in and, and rate a movie and you give it anything less than one star, they'll leave the comment, but that half a star doesn't do anything doesn't do it they just let they just they consider it kind of a form of hate speech where it's like well nobody would ever give it 10 percent. 10 percent is too excessive even if you hate a movie you're not going to give it 10 percent. that's what they're basically saying it's like no 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 no. i want to give it in fact if i could give it a zero i would but it's sneaky because that way they can let people vent their rage <laughs> but it's like you're you're punching nothing you're punching nothing you're you're not venting it on anything it just goes off in into space i thought that was fascinating that uh, that they would do that so yeah if and and of course you you, you watched my video i probably released today or maybe you didn't where i said that you gotta remember that rotten tomatoes ev everybody it, there's no no such thing as being perfectly objective rotten tomatoes wants the movie industry to succeed therefore they they want you to watch as many movies as possible even means, something as horrible as that latest star wars movie well yeah so what well, doesn't even have to be the star wars movie so if if you saw it because they know psychologically what will happen if you go into rotten tomatoes because it's become the the standard and you see a popcorn score which is us the peers because a lot of people aren't even looking at the reviewers anymore it's like whatever because the reviewers are, are bought at this point because they're just so scared of turning against certain studios. But you look at a popcorn score and it says 30%. You're going to go watch that movie? Maybe not. But if you it comes in at 50%, you I don't might. pay attention to that. I don't watch a lot of movies now anyway, ever since Flat Earth, of course. But, yeah, but, but I never paid attention anyway before that to the critics because the critics never had the same kind of viewpoint on things as I did. They That's, went for the most banal stuff to give it the exactly. The they, up. they don't like horror movies, certain sci-fi movies. They don't go into. They love. They love certain directors like Steven Soderbergh, for example. They'll give him extra points just because he's Steven Soderbergh. It's like, well, you know, he meant well. <laughs> it's, like, well it's, it's like, really? You're going to give him a pass just because he meant well? And the movie wasn't, I mean, you know, they'll they'll give people extra points. But in this case, uh, again, I don't want to dwell too much on it. 
it was it's amazing because we've now hollywood like everything the antitrust laws are there for a reason we've created it's never had to happen in hollywood we've created a juggernaut in hollywood which is disney who has saved off all its money over the years <clears throat> from all the animated movies that they you know they always make money they bought marvel and star wars so they basically own most of the summer now they they and because of that if they put a movie out and you're a professional let's say you're a professional movie reviewer you don't like the movie very much you gonna give them a thumbs down the movie are you knowing what the repercussions might be knowing that you know you were just invited to a premiere last month and you were did this and you did that and knowing you could be replaced in two seconds you gonna you gonna go against them apparently nobody did nobody went against them this time around it's like screw it i'm just gonna give it a pass maybe the maybe the audience will be okay maybe it'll be okay and it turned out to be the opposite the reviewers scored it at 90 something percent and the pop and the average person was like oh my god and and so they're lashing out at everybody because yeah don't listen to what other people say. Make did, your own did, decision on things. That's my bottom line. Well, well, let, let me end it with this. The is look. I've never seen, and you can ask anybody that knows movies. I have never seen a single movie generate such such vitriol, such hatred. You know, you. I don't know if again, if you haven't, if you get a chance, watch the last three minutes of that video that I made, where it's it's a woman from Mindless Entertainment. She's only got like four and a half thousand subs. But she goes off on a freaking jag that is inspiring. <laughs> it's just one take, no edits. I mean, there's there's no cuts in this. She just tears in. She goes after Disney. She goes after J.J. Abrams. She goes after the Lucasfilm. She goes after everybody and says, what have you done? What have you done? And again, if it, it just it, that's that's the sort of damage you can do if you're trying to influence the media like that. You got to give people at least some transparency. You can't, I, I know this world's based on deception, but you can't deceive them so badly on so many things, including our entertainment. Chris Topher made a good comment in the live chat, and he said that Hollywood hasn't made a good movie in 20 years. They nope. replaced story with special effects. Yeah, yeah, so, style over substance and remakes, 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 remake everything. If um, you can or a sequel. Tamea that, said that uh, modern Star Wars movies are total SJW brainwashers. By the way, I've had to learn new terms because of this movie. I didn't even know what SJW was. I'll be honest. Yeah, I'm older. I get yeah, that. Yeah, SJW and cock and all of these words that have come into the world. Mar Mary Sue? Oh, I, I had to actually look that up. What's and Mary I must, Sue? Other than I must, a I must country girl in Dallas. <laughs> exactly. No, I, well, yeah, yeah. Mary Sue, goodbye, heart. Yeah, no, I'm I'm a Star Trek guy. Mary Sue and the the male equivalent, it's it can be either Mary Sue or Marty Stew, which is weird because they're both initialed MS. <gasps> Mark Sargent <gasps> or, or Miss Steer. Yay! <laughs> so, uh, no, it is a character that's that was created by fan fiction that has that's basically invincible. You know, the character when you write fan fiction, sometimes they'll insert themselves into fan fiction, and you don't have to go through a, a character arc. You don't have to go through training. It's all of a sudden you're good at everything, all the time, and that's what they're saying was is happening here uh, with uh, the character Ray from from the, the last two movies, which is like, look, she's she can do anything. She's literally invincible. She doesn't even get wounded. <laughs> she's just. She she can I mean she's she can fly them Falcon she can use a lightsaber she can master the force and she's like not doing anything I mean, yet Luke running through the forest he's training for weeks she is so I had to learn that term basically Mary Sue and I was like and I was I was like really how did I miss this because it, up until now it hadn't been as glaring this apparently is the most glaring use of Mary Sue which is sort of it's sort of like a, a fan fiction term so yeah. very interesting and I anyway. never knew that. But of course, the SJW and the cuck thing, you hear people saying, it. I hate the word cuck, and I don't like the definition either. See, I never, I don't hear that as much. She's S, S, SJW, I get it. I, I, I get that. That's what, you know, well, that's the, the theme of this year and the end of social last year. Social justice anyway. warriors. Yeah, social, oh yeah, in case no one, social yeah. justice warrior or warriors, depending on who we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Those people, the, inserting... So what, what, and you're wondering, why is this guy doing it? Social justice warriors will insert things into movies that sh 
just blow away the continuity. Let's right, they shouldn't be there, but they're put in there as a point. Kind of like when you're watching a movie and all of a sudden there's a Coke machine in the back of the scene. It's right. put there for a purpose. Well, yeah, it's put there for Without a purpose. Things. Right. But but at least you get that, especially in America. It's like, yeah, what, I mean, honestly, it probably was going to be there anyway. In America, there's so many, there's so much advertising and branding you're going to see. Yeah, so, social justice warriors. Social things, justice, things, that's movies. tougher. That's because, worse, act, way worse, actually. Because then they have to build it into the plot. Yeah, it's which, an agenda, and it destroys an actual real plot to get the agenda going. Yeah, let's let's talk about social inequality. Let's talk about slavery. Let's talk about animal rights. And you're talking about all these things. It's like, it's a space war movie. <laughs> what are you <laughs> doing you had to go to a completely different planet just to talk about those things and that and it, doesn't even mean that those issues may or may not be valid oh yeah yeah but there's a there's you, a time and a place and in outer fake outer space in the future or past it's not the time yeah yeah you don't have to put them everywhere you like for example you wouldn't put them in a james bond movie exactly you're not gonna put oh, them in james hold on just a moment let me talk about the plight of the wallaby <laughs> yeah you're you're not gonna put them in a fact any any show that has the universe already built a, a whole bunch of money, fast and the furious james bond harry potter uh star trek star wars just take your pick you just go on and on uh you know any, any of those movies you don't all of a sudden throw those in there if you can you want to do it during the interviews you want to do it during press conference you know all this other crap do it there don't mess with the formula you know or you're going to run into what uh, what i discovered which is just hatred <laughs> well so many movies and this has been going on for quite some time even before flat earth came into my life right. um and oh by the way christopher brady in our live chat said that flat earth murdered movies for me in a way me as well but when i used to watch a whole lot more movies in fact sometimes i'd go to what i called a movie marathon i'd see three movies in one day go from theater you know like a big megaplex one two three just sure. take a whole day and go see and i loved doing that it was fun i even saw movies i didn't really like that much just because it was fun and i was with friends now i don't think Think i'd be able to i don't i have a cat that might jump here um i don't think i'd be able to do that without pulling my hair out i and i don't you know i'm not i i mean literally because it would just be so emotionally draining the plot holes in movies that's the thing as you know there's the planetary stuff there's the sjw stuff there's the the, the, the coke you know d and other products being openly displayed but the plot holes glaring plot holes if given 15 minutes, I could have rewritten the plot by just changing a few scenes and made it actually made make sense. But these are high paid script writers and this was green lighted by somebody. But it, when you actually look at what happened, it never could have happened. And I don't see how they get away with that or why they do. And that's why I say the whole, I hate the term shit test, but shit testing could be happening. They write these things and put them out there and see if we fall for it. And we collectively, we do. And we continue going. We continue buying the tickets and feeding this machine of lies. And it's disgusting. Agreed. I want to say hi to Flat Earth Subgenius Society. He's added society to his name. And Ace McLeod has joined our live chat. And what else? Um, <laughs> uh, Ace is saying... Uh, first time he's seen TV in two years, he watched two episodes of something called Da Vinci's Demons. He said, wow, um, if you still watch TV, that's a great show to watch. I never mm -hmm. even knew it existed. I watched all all of it. How and was it, it? it? That was one of the, the paid channel series. I, I stopped watching network series once HBO and Showtime and Stars and Cinemax started creating their own series. And I've watched most, probably 80% of the shows that were on there. Because remember, they don't have to play by the same rules that network television does. Network television still cannot you know, show nudity. They cannot swear. They cannot show graphic violence or anything like that. They, they're, they're penned into really the same rules that a sitcom would be. And it doesn't matter if it's dr drama or not. And it just, it just seems more authentic when you're when you're looking at the stuff that's in the pay channels and you pay for that privilege hmm. so yeah da vinci's demons was one of them and there's many others out there sometimes i feel like i want to just kick back relax and watch something mm -hmm. and then i see a youtube video and then i decide oh, i'm going to finish this chapter in this book and then i never do it and that must be because i really don't want 
to do it. The last time I watched a movie was with you when you were here in my house. And oh, wow. We visited. And, uh, you know, just today I bought um, some wooden popcorn bowls, which is a weird insider thing. But remember when you made popcorn, right. uh, you said, well, you don't have any wooden bowls for popcorn. And I thought, you know, darn, I don't. So I, I did buy some. <laughs> So. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's a great. It's it's more of a texture thing than anything. You know else. what? You're right. You're right. Yeah. The oil and the salt on a wooden bowl. It just seems more. I mean, it's kind of seventies, but it's, it's. That's what makes it good. Yeah. So I'm yeah. set for the popcorn for the next right time we watch a movie here. Right on. Um. What else is going on? Oh, the Hori Sheet Show says, "Flat Earth murder movies, music, and games for me. TV, everything." So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's that bad, but yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Well, I mean, honestly, it, it's well, you are a consumer of media more so than most people. So. Yeah, yeah, but for me, it's just there's nothing. I mean, we've run out of plot lines. We exactly there's, just, there's nothing. We've rebooted so many things now. That um, Brian Stavely in the live chat says, "Yeah, nine one one killed TV. Flat Earth kills movies." Well, uh, not all movies, but some. Yeah, yeah, well, then there's so many bad ones out anyway. You know, they're killing themselves for those with those of us with discerning taste. Ginger Sugarbush says, hey, Patricia, don't forget about what you have on your phone. Thank you, Ginger, because I said about 10 minutes ago, I've got something on my phone I want to talk about. And boom, I would have what's totally on, forgot had Ginger. What's on, what's on your phone? In the live chat. A little smudge. No. Um, a guy named Ven Giancia, who is a Facebook friend says he's planning his first event to be held over a few days near mid-November, which I know is far away, but you know how these things are. They, they, they seem to come up pretty quick. Um, and this is called the Colorado International Flat Earth Film Festival. And uh, it's uh, in Denver. It's November 17th on Kalamath Street. And they've got this Colorado International Flat Earth Film Festival. So if you want more information about it, you can look it up. It's all over Facebook. And you can also go to filmfreeway.com, Colorado International Flat Earth Film Festival. If you're a filmmaker and you want to enter your film in it, boom, that's how to do it. Filmfreeway.com, Colorado International Flat Earth Film Festival. And uh, I will put that link in the description box of this video. While I was saying that, something came across my mind like, oh, you need to mention that too. And it came and went at the exact same time. I hate when that happens. Happens yes. probably to all of us. So we... I guess have pretty much covered all of the things that have been going on when it comes to the media and uh, all of the you know the newsworthy items in flat Earth itself. Is there anything else that you've got top of mind to discuss with everyone before? We uh, I, I'm doing Russian television tomorrow. Oh my gosh, that's very interesting. Yeah, they, they just you... contacted me this morning, and I can't pronounce any of this stuff. <laughs> it's, it's seriously all the letters are screwed up the all the letters are screwed up such an american <laughs> i know freaking russians no i shouldn't say that especially after you know i uh, in fact the the person contacted me i think it was olga and what about our daughter exactly <laughs> look thank you we have tv crew for tomorrow our she's local... not russian but close <laughs> tv producer natalia she is on shootings now We'll call you to discuss exact time of interview. We also kindly ask to show attributes of flat earth images that you sent me tomorrow during shootings. Keep in mind, not real shootings, only camera. So whatever, it's going to be fun. And uh, they're going to be, we're going to be talking tomorrow about it. So I don't know. I'm not going to give away the, the name of the place because it's not going to be live. We're just going to, we're going to shoot, I think, an hour and a half and some b-roll well that sounds interesting yeah they're they're everywhere who knows i may be pulled into a van and, and that's the to, end of you flown to russia i don't know no it'll be fun uh i you know me i like the stuff i'm also there's a paranormal show i'm going to be doing on saturday which is let me get you the right name of it real quick hang on it is someone's interviewing me for something involving flat earth right after this show really on, on skype I don't even know who oh, it is. God. They it just is. asked and I said yes, kind of the way you do it. So. Par paranormalradio.com. 
Oh, that's interesting. Is it going to be Para, on I'm their sorry, show? Para, Paramania Radio. Paramania Radio? Whatever. Doesn't matter. Like name. The, uh, There's nothing paranormal about Flat Earth. There's actually something well, paranormal no, but about if you're looking for interesting topics, what else are you going to put it under? I mean, it, it seems like they could grab it. Yeah, I guess that's true. In fact, I'm happy of anybody that's discussing it. Um, Musicians for Truth says, is Beely related to Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> you know no, what? No, but, but let me, I, you know <laughs> what? I'm going to say, I, I've got to throw this in there. No, but Rose from, and I'm not picking on her, but you know, she's a very nice young Asian girl. Rose in The Last Jedi has already been pretty much labeled worse than Jar Jar Binks. Really? Yep. And Jar Jar Binks was just a reboot, a retread of, you'll get this, from Roger Rabbit, from Who Framed Roger Rabbit from back in the day. George Lucas was so, was like, oh, that's a great character. wonder what I could do with that. And he basically made a computer-generated version of Roger Rabbit. Wow. He thought that would be a good idea. And he's laughing now, I'm sure. People, in fact, there was. Let me let me mention this. There was I a think review. that uh, they were laughing when they put Jar Jar Binks in a Star Wars movie. To be honest, he, it's another shit test. How are they going to believe this? He sells Star Wars for I think five billion. You know, a little chunk of change, five billion dollars. Like he needed the money. Skywalker Ranch. It's paid for, it, folks. And he uh, and and there was a reviewer that says, "You wait." You know, once Disney did their thing, he goes, "You wait. You'll be you'll be wishing." one day for lucas to come back <laughs> you'll be begging and it's like oh crap well you know i was thinking that remember when the movie avatar came out i think the movie avatar how you know how everybody said oh it's dances with wolves you know it is dances with wolves. well i thought that same thing but later on i started to think you know this isn't a movie about how native people are um, better and closer to the earth than the white man, which I think that they are in many cases. But I think it was a way to use Native people to make a movie about Native people being better as opposed to really deeply honoring them. Hmm. Yeah, that and a uh, message to white people saying, don't meddle, you know, leave them alone, let them well, do their thing. Don't exploit the their, yeah, I know, it was... And I saw I saw it many times, and still I was angry because it lost to the Hurt Locker. I never finished the whole movie. So the Hurt Locker? No, I never saw that. But I never finished uh, Dances with Wolves. I mean, you know, um, you, you never finished Avatar. Avatar? Nope. I just said really? I've seen this before. Oh right. I've, yeah. I've and seen if you this guys, before. If you guys are old enough to remember Dances with Wolves, nineteen ninety. Manipulative. Kevin Costner, you can say what you want about him, but he directed and starred and won Best Picture for Dances with Wolves. You know, we haven't talked about Stefan Molyneux. That's oh, something that right. happened since our last Secret Show right, last right, Wednesday. Right. You know, he, did he ever backpedal from that? Well, I think that was not real. Okay, this is what, well, you know, for those Fools. who don't know, it was April Fool's, but aside from April Fool's, I think it was appropriately timed as an April Fool's Day joke, but um, Stephen Chess, who's in our live chat, quite a long time ago, got on Stefan Molyneux's uh, program and didn't really debate him. It wasn't a structured debate, but they did have a conversation and Stephen went off the cuff and discussed Flat Earth. Now, if it were to happen today, Stephen and all of us are way more clued up on Flat Earth and could have answered some of uh, Stefan Molyneux's questions a little bit better. But Stephen did a bang up job, especially for a newbie, as we all were at the time, with this whole concept that we just stumbled on. And Stefan was very, very well rehearsed and practiced in his questions and answers. He pretended as if he didn't know anything about Flat Earth during that quote unquote debate, which is on Stephen Chess's channel, by the way. That's right. S T E P H E N C H E S S. Um, you could tell that he pretended he didn't know anything about the whole Flat Earth concept, but he asked all these certain co kinds of questions that showed he did. Well, a lot of people think that he actually has now come out as being interested in flat earth. But I listened to that whole recent Stefan Molyneux video and I see it as being Stefan Molyneux is still anti flat earth. It, it was well, just him toying with the idea, discussing it as a way to discuss other issues he feels are far more important. And Hey, those other issues are important. I'm not saying that that flat earth is far more important than that, but yeah, no, he's no flat earther. Think, think of it this way. 
because I'm looking at his original video and he mentions his original video at the beginning of this thing. And I had to look it up because it, it, when you're a content creator, you will check from time to time and see what was my most popular yeah, like, video. What was my most popular video, Flat Earth. Oh, just about high time I do another one. Oh, it's April Fool's Day. How can I tie all this together? Uh, cue Stefan Molyneux pushing the start or record por portion on his computer. At the same time, you got to remember that he made that video. He has not done a really super popular video in some time, some years, actually. And this gives you an idea. He did the first Flat Earth video no November 7th, 2015. And it's got 1.6 million hits on it. And, you know, if it's rattling around his head for two and a half years now. I don't think it's rattling around his head. I just think he used that as an opportunity to make another video. And he definitely Maybe, but... even, he even said April Fool's on that video in his comment. So... Well, he played it pretty deadpan. Yeah. Sort of like, I think, you know, do remember the bandwagon thing I was talking about. Is he jumping on it because he knows he can get hits? Maybe testing the waters so as the, an anti-flat earther, but just seeing what people have to say. No different than, for example, BuzzFeed Blue. Who, you know, is it the guy that was at BuzzFeed down at the conference? And if I'm not mistaken, if you guys know who I'm talking about, the glasses and mustache, fake mustache, by the way. Uh, he's, it's called the flat earth theory explained, which he had already renamed ones from I, I, why I believe in flat earth. And he goes and it was released when was it released on April fool's day? No, it was not. It was released on March 27th. I think he's trying to get in the bandwagon too. And he's got half a million hits already since March 27th. And we're going to see more and more of that where people are just jumping on because the momentum is going and going. And I mean, the, those science headlines are certainly going to help to where we're going to see people. I Do I think at this point we're going to see a flat earth antichrist? No, probably not. Yeah. Because, that's one of the things that we thought was going to happen when we made our 2016 predictions, but it's too, it's too late now. Right. You, who, who's going to be, I mean, yeah, you could get a celebrity in there, but they're still going to be like, Oh yeah, I got into it. Uh, you know, but it's time and date stamps. You, you but can't. people do it all the time. You come across somebody who's starting a channel and they'll say, oh, I was, I've been here since 2014. And you're like, no, you haven't. No, you aren't. <laughs> no, you aren't. Uh, you know, even, even Matt, <laughs> just mm -hmm. to, because he had some old videos. You know, Bilu was here before all of us. Now we what, know. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I mean, you can, He's yeah, the you can. He's flat earther. He needs to be our, our um, mascot. No, that that being said, be careful because you can go back and change your titles and no matter how old the video is. And so if you want to change when, change your title and say, oh, yeah, flat earth, blah, blah, blah. Make sure you well, click on it. Some people do that. Yes, yeah, so have I. Mm -hmm. It doesn't score very well because you can't change the video. You can only change the title. Uh, Midnight Gardener is here and we have a good comment from ADR who says, he, Stefan Molyneux, was sucking wind in his own endeavors, so he poked flat earth because we have so many people. That's possible, very possible. Um, I think from now on, if anything ever happens and goes wrong within the flat earth world, we need to just put the blame on Bilu. I think that's got to be the new way we use Bilu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, I hope everybody has seen the new video that Jaron put out. As of this date, April fourth, twenty eighteen, he he put out a Freedom of Information Act request for space footage, and he made a video about it. So it's called NASA Responds. Um, check it out; it's on uh, the Jaronism channel. And I do want to mention Gary John and the Flat Earth uh, Convention UK twenty eighteen, and that thing is coming up pretty soon. Um, tickets are still on sale. And if you want more information, you can go to their website. And let me see if I can got that. It's flatearthconvention.com, uh, I think. Or you can go to their um, YouTube channel, Official Flat Earth UK Convention 2018. And, and you saw some... my first trailer for the Canadian conference. Oh, yes, I certainly did which is coming up in August in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Oh, and sure. there's um something happening well in Denver where we've we've got a 
conference coming up as well. Well, not until November. But yeah. Right. But tonight at six o'clock, there's a meetup at the Goose Town Tavern. That would be 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Oh. And I know Cammy and Bob, I think, are going to that. So uh, there you go. Also, and it didn't get a lot of traction. I was a little surprised. Chris Hadfield, the Canadian astronaut, he did a, a video against Flat Earth a few days ago called Chris Hadfield, The Astronaut's Guide to Flat Earth Theory. Oh, he's the guy who plays guitar on the ISS? Uh, yes. Yeah, we I, should I, listen to everything he's got I to say. I believe so. Now, what was weird was he released it on April Fool's, but he was responding, you know, he was. He, it wasn't like he was doing a parody or anything. He was saying, why Flat Earth is a stupid idea. So, in fact, I would... Yeah, because it... It's a stupid idea to him because he's one of the people that are involved in lying. So right. talking about things that undo his lies, yeah, it's stupid, very stupid for him. And I, it, I was a little surprised that we didn't see more April Fool's things that were, that were, that were happening uh, well, about Flatter. the thing Earth. is, is that you can't really, let's just say you- Yeah, and how far, where do you go with that? The yeah. video saying, well, Flat Earth isn't true and we- hereby you know decide letting you know that we live on a globe I, like i couldn't do it because it would cause me like physical and mental pain right. to do that and that's why it's really hard to come out with an april fool's day joke and that's why things like stephen chess doing the the the, the, the video he did with the chinese space station falling from the sky supposedly and striking and killing bilu is funny because it's not actually lying about your belief or it's not even belief your knowingness about the earth not being a globe so there was one that's still up in the top 10, top five, five facts that prove the earth is flat. It was released on April Fool's from Engineering Explained, which obviously means they hate us. And that's fine. We can we can deal with that. Let's I got see. no problem there. I don't know. I think, I think, Did we cover I think it? we've done it. I think we covered it all. I'm sure there's some things I wanted to talk about that I've forgotten, which always happens. But that's uh, the way the globe bounces as it yeah, I'm to the trash can. <laughs> looking through, there's yeah, a lot of stuff. But oh, there's us, the live show. Hey. Yeah, go figure. The, the, convex, the convex thing chat. will disappear. It will not get as much traction as No Forest on Flat Earth. Mm -hmm. And everything else going great. So we're just kind of. Getting ready to see how the next stage of this goes. Uh, Flat Earth Subgenius Society mentioned something that we didn't mention, and I did watch the video that David Icke talked about Flat Earth again. Very, you know, not not that deeply or anything. He didn't really take a stance. How can you not? I yeah. mean, the the bandwagon. There's a reason why they call it the bandwagon. That is, people. If you don't jump on it, you're going to feel like now we're getting. You remember the dancing guy? People are going to feel like they're missing out on exposure if they don't jump on this which is why I can't wait to see what actors finally, because we have not seen any musicians, athletes, different media, fringe people, but no, no heavy hitting actors yet. Want to say hi to H Machina Magic and 70th Marbrin and Plainview Comedy phase, people who've come in to chill out during the last few moments of our show. Um, the Hori Sheet Show is coming back with more of those reports that he does where he's kind of in front of a CGI desk doing a very, um, I don't want to say mainstream, but very professional level overview of what's going on in Flat Earth. He's going to be doing those again. Hmm. Uh, Fanny Lancer has joined our live chat and Jack Frost is here. Hello. Uh, o Double Egg FPV is here. Um, and um, Andrew Foster, too. So I appreciate everyone who's been here for the live chat. And if you would not mind, give the video a thumbs up. And uh, later, come back and leave a comment because we've got over 300 people watching, but sometimes all the people that are here, or at least some of them, don't come back and leave a comment. So I don't know. The more comments, the better. It gets traction, the more people see the video. Right. Um, <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's the show. That's it. Cool. We've put another one in the can. Yep. And uh, CC on with me tomorrow at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And until we meet again, Mark Sargent, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Patricia. That sounded so sincere. Didn't it?
Yes. And on that note, keep it flat.